The real reason why your rent is so damn high? It's late 2023, the Phoenix area. Investigators with the state attorney general's office are looking at apartment rents. They're up 76% since 2016. Something is off. These four building rents are 12% higher than others, but they offer similar amenities. They have different landlords, so you'd think they should be competing with one another. Yeah. But they weren't. The Why would they compete with each other if they could all settle with having the same price? Like, nobody wants to lower their prices. Price fixing, by the way? Yeah, but like, pr what I'm saying is that price fixing is a natural outcome of a free market. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. We're allegedly being set by one entity, an algorithm owned mm -hmm. by a company called RealPage. Oh, wow. In fact, this was happening everywhere in the area. That's old-fashioned price fixing using new technology. We allege in fact a housing cartel. Ooh. Over 2,000 miles away, something similar is happening. It's alleged that all of these different units, their prices were set by one single algorithm, which sounds bad. And it could be happening in cities and states across the country. Renters have filed over 30 different lawsuits against RealPage. Oh my We're going to God. talk about what all this means, how algorithms, these black boxes of data, are shaping our market and giving an incredible amount of power to the few. And how the Department of Justice and some state attorney generals are fighting back. Okay. Because this is a story about how a few lines of code broke the American housing market. Jesus. I didn't even know about this what before. What is RealPage? So RealPage is a company that operates uh, software that allows landlords to um, input their data into an algorithm and then RealPage uh, sets the prices for all of those landlords. This is actually against the law. So they're not price fixing because somebody else is fixing the prices. That's cute. Attorney General yeah. Mays isn't the only one alleging this. Our allegations are that uh, RealPage, in combination with 14 of the largest landlords here in the District of Columbia, are effectively colluding with one another to set rents. Across America, mm -hmm. rent is up 20% since 2020. The oh my God. Wow. Dude, this is in like five years. Four years. 2024 just started. The attorney generals of Arizona and D.C. are suing RealPage and a host of big landlords, alleging that an algorithmic housing cartel is helping drive up prices. In the pre-RealPage days, landlords would compete with one another. Mm -hmm. They played a guessing game with rent prices. Push it too high and people move, leaving landlords hunting for new tenants. It was a delicate balance, a market. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if it was fair, but it wasn't rigged. Okay. An algorithm helped change all of that. We're talking about an algorithm that aggregates otherwise confidential information that the landlords have that ordinarily they would not share with their competitors. Data like rent prices, lease expiry dates, any deals they offer to tenants. That allows then the algorithm to spit out a pricing recommendation, all designed to keep the overall market at its highest peak. They are not charging what the market can bear they are controlling the market it's leading to the exacerbation i wonder how they could stop this because i feel like legally it's kind of hard to stop something like this that's probably why it keeps happening of our affordability crisis our housing crisis here in arizona if you could yeah. imagine a smoke-filled room where the landlords the largest landlords in the district of columbia mm -hmm. came together to decide what they were going to charge in rent to share their confidential information everybody would be able to see that that's an anti-competitive practice until recently yeah, it using is. shared pricing algorithms like this flew under the radar if your algorithm set prices mm -hmm. you just say it's not cheating it's a suggestion right not anymore Lena Khan and the FTC have said, just a suggestion? That's price fixing. No excuses. In RealPage, according to the lawsuits, they Your algorithm can't do anything that would be illegal if done by a real person. To the lawsuits, they weren't even pretending the prices were suggestions. RealPage has a system set up where the landlords who have adopted mm -hmm. the system agree to a set of rules. Y'all go and talk about killing them like a firing squad? If you go and try to kill them, they're just going to pay other poor people to kill you. Like, everybody likes to circle jerk about like, oh, I'm a revolutionary. That's not the way it works. Don't tell them. You think they're not going to figure it out? Look at history. One of the rules is that RealPage gets to set rent prices. If landlords mm -hmm. want to charge less than the digital oracle suggests, they have to justify their decision. 
and the justification needs to be reviewed by real page the french revolution y'all don't understand what that was that was not the poor people revolting against the rich people that was like aristocracy and high-end uh like high income earners revolting against royalty it was nobles versus nobility yeah page can push back against the justification and if you push back too much real page can kick the landlord mm -hmm. out of the scheme with one insider telling investigators Sometimes we were happy to see customers go. They also yeah. had a policing agent that would go out and make sure that the landlords and their leasing agents were staying in line and not deviating from, from the price that was being set. This scheme, mm -hmm. if true, has had a real tangible impact on Americans. RealPage advertises that it's going to increase revenues 2% to 7% for the participants in the cartel. Wow. Well, RealPage is telling these landlords and is doing what these landlords is, don't worry about occupancy rates anymore. It doesn't matter really how many people move out of your building, you're still going to grow your revenue over time. That makes sense though, right? Because like, yeah, if you're charging way more money, but it's like if you are if you charge 20% more, you lose 10% of your customers, you're making more money that's a good point and you're also making even more money than that because then you don't have to do maintenance on those buildings or in those rooms that's smart how through these coordinated price increases in mm -hmm. phoenix alone we've seen rent increase 76 percent yeah. since 2016 it is 76 percent oh my god that's you have a two thousand dollar rent now it's 3.5k that's insane almost certain that people were Holy shit. as a result of these price increases mm -hmm. and that some people were made homeless by them. Oh, absolutely. To their prospective customers, the landlords, RealPage is pretty open about all of this. Yeah. You can go to their website, type in a zip code, and view a sample of what buildings are using the software, along with any corresponding price changes. Mm -hmm. We'll see this building right here. Rent is actually down about 4%. If we just zoom out a little bit, a few blocks over, this rent is actually up 4%. They used to have videos where landlords talked about how RealPage's algorithm pushed them to raise rent. Yeah. But the company deleted it after the Washington Post ran a story. Yeah, see, that's a probably good idea because, like, you don't want to have a video that's, like, talking about, yeah, so we was scamming people like this and we made a lot of money, like, because it just makes you look bad. It does. That does. It makes you look bad. You shouldn't be doing that. On investor calls, they're flat out saying the algorithm is going to recommend higher lease rates for every property. Mm -hmm. But the company goes to great lengths to train landlords to hide this scheme from renters. Landlords were coached across a variety of scenarios uh -huh. and told not to mention RealPage or pricing algorithms. Well, duh. Tenants. Instead, they were supposed to say stuff like units were being priced individually. So they just lie. That's, that's cute. RealPage and the larger industry dispute the charges. The By the way, I think this problem is going to keep getting worse. Uh, like, because what's happening, right, is like you're having like poor people get poorer, rich people get richer. And whenever that happens, you're going to have more rich people with more houses, but it's going to be less. Well, it's going to be the same rich people, if anything, less rich people with even more houses. And so that's going to like think about the uh, the, the ratio there. You're going to have even more power over the market at that point. And like this is happening more every year, especially now as like the Internet has popped off. People are starting to learn how to do this. I think it probably was always like this to an extent. But now it's like super, super, super escalating because I think of, you know, resources and tools like this that, you know, nobody really previously had access to. Seems pretty sustainable. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the problem. Yeah, but BlackRock is using AI to acquire and sell. Yeah, no doubt. Of course they are. It should be legislated against. Of course, they're just running the clock. Yeah, but like the problem is that the people that do this are smart. It, it's not like that these guys aren't stupid that are that are running these systems and running these scams. So like they're really good at trying to like, you know, undercut the law, get around the rules, figure out a way. But oh, this doesn't really apply to us. Like, oh, well, if we change this, it's technically not against the rules. Like, it's really hard to stop this shit from happening. No, they're dumb and short sighted. Sure. I mean, like you can say that all you want. But, um, you know, it, it's is it crazy how like they just always somehow come out ahead. But they're all stupid. Uh-huh. Sure. That's a cope. Out of lawsuits, RealPage has largely stayed quiet. Ignoring our request for an interview, but the industry has published. You never underestimate defense. your enemy. Thing itself, they make a bunch of different arguments. And these people are your enemy. Two major points. The first 
Sharing info doesn't mean they're teaming up. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the rental world is just too big and too messy for any sort of secret deal to stick. But that doesn't seem to stand yeah. up to scrutiny. The real page uh, algorithm is being used by nearly 90% of the apartment owners in the DMV. Real page control. And this is happening with a lot of like big tech companies. I think it's happened with Google. It's happening now with smartphones and like uh, like like basically apps in the US are controlled by two companies. So this is like a massive multi-billion dollar industry that is effectively owned by Samsung and Google. Or like the Google Play Store. Sorry, Samsung and or Google and uh, and Apple. Excuse me, sorry. Google and Apple. Like this is bad. That's a very bad thing to have like and and you're seeing this with everything, right? You're seeing it with uh with with social media. You're seeing it with renting. You're seeing it with uh, search engines with Google. You're seeing it with like apps on phones. It's everything. Everything is becoming a monopoly. And the problem is that because I think a lot of the leadership in like government are so technologically illiterate, they don't even really understand what's going on. So like they're always playing a game 20 years behind. 70% I think that's what's happened. Of the rental units in Phoenix and or they paid off both at least 50 both actually of the market in Tucson. 90% in DC, 70%. Yeah, I, I actually that's a really good point because I I actually agree with you more now that you said that than even what I said originally because yeah, I actually think that a lot of the senators understand these problems, but it's in their financial benefit to allow them to keep happening. I think a better way to explain it would be that the general voting population doesn't understand the problems or they do understand the problems, but they believe that they're on the right side of the problem. So it's beneficial to them. And you see this very regularly, people that are happy whenever a bad thing happens to a bad person. But that doesn't make the bad thing good. I think for a lot of people, though, being able to draw that distinction is very hard. And so they, they like they can't push for this either. They can't push for. Like, for example, getting rid of gambling in children's games with like microtransactions like they, they can't push to get rid of this. And the reason why is because if you are a senator and your primary voter base, like the average age of a voter is like, I don't know what it is. Right. But like, let's actually see um, average age of a voter in the U.S. This is really kind of hard for me to get like a super simple answer. But median voters, I was going to say 53 uh, 50 something white person who didn't go to college. Maybe that's the case. Um, I think there's probably a lot of other instances here. Voter turnout in elections, 2020 by race. Let me see. Is there anything else here? Yeah, I, I don't think there's like a super simple way to look at it. But the point is that a lot of people who are 53 don't have the same level of technological literacy that somebody who's 35 does. Because like you think if you're 53, that means you were born in 1971, right? And so if you have that, Guess what? You don't know. Oh, you did not grow up with the Internet. You did not grow up with uh, what do you call it? Uh, you didn't grow up with like technology in the same way. You didn't grow up with cell phones. You didn't grow up with social media, anything like that. So that's a massive difference. And so those people just simply don't have the, the they don't even have the vocabulary to understand the problems. So like whenever they hear that their senator who they voted for to stop border patrol or stop or to start border patrol, either build the wall or destroy the wall is focusing on regulating video games. They're going to be like, what are you doing? Reg what the fuck are you talking about video games for? And that's what happens. And this isn't talking about. Biden. No, I'm talking about either one. Like, I, I think the Democrat voters are the same thing. And like, remember, like uh, young Democrats had a reality check. Remember in uh, 2016 and then again in 2020, where they all thought that, you know, oh, Bernie Sanders is really popular on social media. He's going to have to win it. And then all the boomer Democrats were like, oh, I remember Joe Biden. He's been a he's been around since for, he knows what he's doing. He couldn't have been around here so much. He didn't know nothing. Let's we're going to go with Joe. Like We know we, we know Joe. Like, yeah, let's go for it. Right. And then they just vote for that shit, man. And they never think about that shit again. Like they vote for that. Like they, they go up there, they get they get driven up there by like their church, and then they drive home, they watch the big game. They don't even think about that shit again until the next election. And that's the average voter. That's hard to it's hard to get to them and make them understand like a social media algorithm, right? It's hard for them to understand like an app on a smartphone. 
because they just don't give a fuck. That's the problem. That's why it keeps happening. I do think senator, some senators are actually like technologically illiterate and like people in the government are. I, I do think it's a big problem, but it's more a problem with the voting population because the voting population doesn't hold them accountable for that. So like, really, what does that say? In Phoenix, that hardly seems like a fragmented rental market. And their second point, more houses, mm -hmm. not less data sharing is the real fix for high rents. That's bunk. You know, we've got apartment units yeah. all over Phoenix that aren't being rented right now because yeah. people can't afford them. The spaces are there, but people can't afford them because these landlords are setting artificially high rent via an, an algorithm. And that is just unacceptable. Absolutely. And and this is like kind of the problem with this conversation is that it, it it's like the logic that even if they weren't using the algorithm, like if they weren't using the algorithm, would that be acceptable? And I think that ethically the answer would have to be yes. Because like you can never say that if you own something or you own a lot of things that you have, like the government has the right or other people have the right to come and take those away from you as they deem necessary. That's an extremely scary precedent to set. I don't know how they can tackle this problem in a way that doesn't cause five more problems. Absolutely unacceptable. Uh, I really don't know. Things are shifting. Renters are banding together in class action lawsuits. Arizona, DC, and possibly North Carolina are suing. They want to end the mm -hmm. scheme. We fund renters and find companies like RealPage. The DOJ has started a criminal investigation into the whole thing. I don't think this is just an Arizona based problem. Yeah. This is not the only place where algorithms are being used to set prices. This is to me one of the- Somebody says government defines property though, they absolutely can. I'm not saying that they can't. Please do not misunderstand this. They absolutely can do it. It's that what the effect of doing it will cause could be worse. Because people go and they say, you, I see people in chat saying, well, that's good. They don't need it. That's great. That's a great mindset to have. What happens whenever they say you don't need something that you have? And this is the problem that a lot of people have. A lot of, you know, like uh, Internet revolutionaries have is that they only view it from the lens of themselves getting somebody else's stuff, but they never think about it from the lens of other people getting their stuff. Bigger kind of issues facing kind of our economy and consumers in the next uh, decade or so. There's a lot of positive things yeah, yeah, that exactly. algorithms and machine learning can do for society, but there are also risks associated with it. We can't be afraid of technology. We have to lean in and learn about it and make sure that we're keeping the public safe from the abuses that can sometimes flow from misuse of technology. That's a smart dude. I hope he, you know, I hope he can figure it out. That's the best take on it I heard out of this whole video. Oh, I'm glad I saw this. I didn't really know a lot about this. Um, you know, obviously I've lived in this house my whole life. Uh, I have friends, obviously, that rent. I've had a lot of my friends, um, obviously not streamer friends, but like just my, my regular, you know, like friends I grew up with, a lot of them have been priced out of Austin. Totally. Like that's how bad Austin is is that they were completely priced out of this city that they grew up in. It's kind of sad, honestly. Yeah, it really is. It's already illegal, you know, just to uphold the law. Well, the problem is that, it, it, like, the way that it's being done is so new that it's hard to interpret the law into something that's so new like this. That's the problem. It's that, like, it's kind of like DMCA, right? Where, like, DMCA law was made in 1998, but we're still using it in 2024. So like what, what's happened between now and then everything has happened. So you have like a law that's like, you know, it's basically like you're, it, it's a squatting law too, right? It's like one of the reasons why people had squatting laws was from like the 1800s and shit like that. But we still have these like super, 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 um, uh, like vestigial laws that exist for something, a problem that didn't, like, that went away, like, in some cases, like, 50, 100 years ago. You don't want to set precedent too early and then have it applied to things in an unforeseen way? Yeah, I actually think this is a much bigger problem, and it's much harder to solve than I think some people are giving it credit for. But, like, I do think it's really bad. Like, for example, like, I know how much apartments and places like this are. So, somebody was selling a house near my house. And uh, I remember uh, Cody and Jeff, uh, that you know, they came over to the house, 
and they, they looked up the house. They said, oh, this is in the area. Like, you know, how much money is the house? And they were like, I forgot how much money it was, but it was like a ridiculous amount of money. And it was like somewhere around like $500,000, something like that. And they were like, what the fuck? How does anybody pay for something like that? It's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. Friends in South Florida have six-figure jobs living in their cars because rent increases are insane in Florida. Yeah. Systematic mainly because of private housing market. Uh, it let free and housing is viewed as an investment. Yeah, I know. It's like the landlord, like land ownership culture. And it's like, really, if you had a lot of money, I feel like buying houses and renting them out is a pretty good way of making money. It, it probably is. Now, there's probably a lot of annoying things that you have to deal with. But like all these guys wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't massively fucking effective. So, yeah, being a landlord sucks. Yeah, but I mean, the problem is that a lot of the people because I bet with a lot of the people that own like <clears throat> multiple apartment buildings, they aren't really landlords. They are money managers for people that run the apartments. Like the people that run the apartments are accountable to them. They don't have to deal with like, for example, uh, you know, a tenant got evicted early and they shit on the floor. Like they don't they don't even hear about that. They're just like, oh, OK, yeah, for sure. And then somebody else has to clean it up. Yeah, property managers. And you think about it also for like the people that are yeah, property managers, the ones that are actually dealing with it themselves. They don't really give a shit either because they're getting paid. That's their job. So it's like this weird thing where like the accountability is displaced in so many different places that nobody really cares about it. I don't know. Like, I, I think this is it's a huge problem, but I don't know what's going to happen. I straight up don't. Yeah, it's going to get worse before it gets better. I think it's going to get a lot worse. And the problem why it's going to keep getting worse is because people are so easily manipulated. So, like, the problem is that a lot of people don't really understand any of these issues because they're complex. They're complex mathematical issues. So you immediately rule out like 80 percent of the population. And really, you're ruling out like 90 percent. And there's like, you know, the other 10 percent inside of that probably aren't even voting. And so how can you get people who don't know how to do multiplication to understand a pricing algorithm? How can you how can you do, how can you bridge that gap? It's really fucking hard. This doesn't scare anyone at all. Well, no, it, it is really scary. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm saying that it's really easy to manipulate stupid people. It's crazy. These issues lightly haven't reached a climax yet. Yeah, I know. And then also, like, whenever things do get really bad, what the people in power will do is they'll just create a diversion to make people get mad about that instead. That's just what's going to happen. I guarantee you it's going to happen. Personally, like, this is a bit of a tinfoil hat, but I think that's why we have so much conversations about identity politics now. I think it's a diversion. It's a diversion from the fact that you can't afford a house, that your future is, uh, you know, effectively uh, locked away from you. But you're fixated around, um, you know, like them moving or getting rid of a statue in a building. And I think these are important issues, but they eclipse everything else to a degree that's completely unrealistic. Yeah, divide and conquer. Yeah, and it will, it will keep working. And the reason why it will keep working is because people won't get smarter. They never do.